Hello folks, the real secret to crack DLR. So, uh, I get annoyed whenever I see the real secret, the top 10 tricky moves, the things that you didn't know about this and all that. And so, uh, but I want to do it like this because there was one thing about LRDI which I think several people uh, miss out on. Lots of times LRDI is solved as though, uh, as though you are in an exam setting where you, where you try a question and then you, you make a decision about whether you want to attempt it or not then move on to solution right? or you look at a set and then you go through the solution and right? so very often looking at a set and going through the solution does not give value in LRDI because you have not spent time mulling over the different variable different constraints and super super important to look at any solution in LRDI after having had a full fledged full blooded go at it. And it seems like the bleeding obvious thing to do. But you know, several students, whenever they take mocks and section tests, there are five sets, they solve two, see that those are right, and then see the other three solutions. The best sets are in these practice exams and, and mocks. There, you have to spend time solving before seeing the solution. And, so, and as much as possible, look at solution immediately after solving. LRTI constraints should be fresh in your head. You can't solve LRDI sets on Tuesday and look at the solution on Thursday. But then where you went and hit a block, that idea uh, simply would have disappeared. And when I say solutions, there are like, um, in my mind, there are three variants to this, three levels to this. And the first level is answer key. And so 1A, 2B, 3C. Second level is uh, solution. Third level is solution thinking about the thought process sitting inside it. And so in LRDI, answer key everybody gives. Very often solutions go like when you look at all these constraints and put all of these in a table, four different structures are formed based on these we can answer questions which is very absurd. And so very often the key to unlocking LRDI set is sometimes different from the natural path we would have taken when you are approaching the set the first time. It is very very important to process that. You might have started with a constraint that Ram sitting in Santro whereas the question might have started with the idea that Krishna is in the blue house and so this Ram Santra would have been an early constraint and it seems nice and obvious to go with it. You have to add the skill set of saying look I started with this but this is probably not the best set starting point. Names of people and color of houses the best starting point. Keep the car floating. This is what we need to do and you have to process it and say I need to dump this way of thinking about it and then shift to this way and how do I do that. So the solution has to speak to thought process. Solution has to speak to hey we do this, we did this, we came this far, it didn't work, let's look at it in another way and then start. Sometimes I see solutions and I feel like that solution is only about 6 minutes long but I am never arriving at that 6 minute solution without banging my head against the wall for 12, 14, 15 minutes before that. So I, I have a serious issue with this because sometimes they make the set seem either too easy or impossibly tough. When I say too easy, it seems like over oh, 6 minutes anyone could have done it. Impossibly tough as we go away with the feeling, I am never going to crack that sequence in 6 minutes. Whereas the truth may be, if you, ha if you have a good think about it in 13, 14 minutes, you can crack it. It's super important to, to figure out the solution and then overlay it on your intuitive thought process. And say, look, I look at the set, I am always going to think from sitting in a hand row first. And then I am going to figure out based on that. Either I have to dump my method and shift to this, in which case, when do I dump? Or I will continue with that and solve this entire set. In which case, how will I do that? What is my solution for this? Don't, don't just go through a solution. You have to say, this is how I went about it. This is the roadblock I faced. How will I have unlocked it in that framework? Super important. Therefore, for the solution to speak to an intuitive thought process right? and then and then and then build from there super important super 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 important and so which why we at 2IM we spend an inordinate amount of time cracking two things one is our solutions are detailed and they go on parts and come back so if a DILR solution is like this very often our DI solution will go like this and then branch off and then come back I tried this it didn't work and then I come back to this now let's try this approach and we do that in the solution to just to reiterate the point that the most intuitive mechanism that we think is not the one that works. We come back and then we go on another direction and that is important. 
to, to have that mind. Second thing that we do, we are very particular about it is all our DILR classes are classes where we say look solve these three sets and then we will discuss these three sets. If it is a class, then there is time pressure to complete that set. There is a 15 minute break where to solve and then somebody comes in. If it is a test that is given, that was given a long while back, then it gets solved but it is not fresh in the head when the solution is getting discussed. So for us, uh, it is a tight package. You finish the test from 8 to 9, attend the class from 9 to 10, 30. So the idea is that set is very clear in your head. Just tried it. You know where the stumbling blocks are. Therefore, the solution seems uh, more intuitive. The, the, uh, and then you can have your doubt clarified. You say, look, I fill this in. Where do I go from here? And so spend time in having, in, in banging your head against every LRDI set. Don't have a notion of set selection when you are practicing LRDI. Choosing two sets out of five is a game for the mock, not for learning. Number one. Number two, bang your head and spend a lot of time cracking it. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it takes 40 minutes, but spending that extra time is going to make you appreciate the solution. Number three, go through the solution, but you have to take effort to overlay that solution onto your intuitive method and say, I would have gone via this, that they took this other route. How do I figure out, train my mind to either take that other route or say, look, I am never going to do it like this. What is the right solution from my approach? And if it's impossibly tough, you tell yourself, look, no way I'm going to figure that out. That's wrong. That's absurd. They might have written that down as a solution, but none of those guys would have actually done it when they were creating this set, when you're trying this set as a test taker. So I don't care about that. This way is too difficult. So this set is not relevant, but this is how I, this, this is the effort I put it. Then you, you have a process to say these solutions, these set are too difficult, which is fine. And back your instinct to say this is too difficult to take 35 minutes to solve, impossibly tough, absurd set, they got it wrong. That is fine. That is completely fine. But you must take this effort to say this was my way of solving. This is a solution. I have got to keep, take my natural instinctive intuitive way of solving and overlay nuggets from the solution on top of this and say this should have been my approach. That is when your brain will get trained saying hey when you, when you go this far, think about it from the other perspective from doing something slightly different. Look at this constraint instead of that. Don't bang your head only with this. Try out two possibilities like that. That subconscious learning will happen that. So it's all about spending more and more time fine tuning your intuitive journeys for solving LRDA. So when I say very often I tell students look at the solution very comfortably. They try in one method. They look at another solution. Solution makes sense and they go to the next set. Not sufficient. Try in your method. Get a stumbling block somewhere, not be able to crack it, spend some more time, then look at the solution and then say, look, that method seems natural for him or her, but not for me. In my method, how do I incorporate that? Oh, yeah, this makes sense. This set was indeed difficult. Then go to the next one. So overlay the solution onto your intuitive thought process. Super crucial. That's also when you will realize that some sets were interesting, tricky, and you didn't get it. And some are insanely tough. It's, it's all right to not get it. Those kinds of questions will not come. You should learn to dump them if something like that comes. Super guys. Best wishes.